here's the real problem. Nobody cares if someone else's child dies from vaping. The e-cigarette companies nor the government have for years. That is why over 27% of U.S. high schoolers vape and 10.5% of U.S. middle schoolers vape. This percentage of kids are now three times more likely to use tobacco products and half of them will ultimately die from this habit. And yes, death because of vaping. As of February 2018, 2020, 2,807 hospitalized cases and 60 deaths of vaping associated lung disease have been reported to the CDC from across 50 states. Here's a map representing cases of vaping in the U.S. States in darker shades of green have more cases than states in lighter shades of green. These states include California and New York. Yes, this issue is happening right here at home. Over the years, there has been a rising number of cases in vaping, and it will only continue to rise without proper acknowledgement and combative actions taken against this issue. So if you ask me, who is the real culprit responsible for this epidemic? It is the government with blood on their hands. The same ones responsible for keeping us safe are accepting money from vaping companies at the expense of the well-being of children. The government has assisted in the creation of a new generation of smokers. In 2017, Senator Ron Johnson delivered a keynote address at a vaping conference encouraging the FDA to pull back a 2016 rule that required e-cigarette companies to get federal approval. Exactly 10 days later, the FDA did just that. As a result, we saw teen vaping grow from 11.7% in 2017 to 27.5% in 2020. The government isn't just irresponsible. They're the ones pulling the trigger by actively deregulating vaping. In just the first half of 2019, Juul gave nearly $100,000 to members of Congress. Lobbying isn't new, but selling children out? Now that's a new low. Do you know what I'm wondering? Why are parents ignoring this glorified monster that can be found hidden away in the pockets of so many young teens? The answer is simple. They're either unaware or simply misled by the advertisement of e-cigarette companies. How do we change that? Well, the internet has allowed for information to become easily accessible. And with social media being one of the most effective ways to reach a large and diverse population of people with your message. Keeping all of this in mind, launching ads and maintaining an online presence on internet and social platforms such as YouTube and Facebook can be extremely promising for getting real anti-vaping information out there, while also uncovering the secrets of a puppet government controlled by big companies like Juul for their own greed and power. They allow these companies to get away with their manipulation in the market and harm young children as long as their pockets stay nice and full. 79% of 30 to 49 year olds use Facebook and 87% of 30 to 49 year olds use YouTube, making them two of the most perfect places to maintain an online presence. With Facebook ad impressions increasing by the year and with YouTube ads being 84% more likely to engage prospects than a TV ad, we are bound to see results in terms of parents becoming more informed on the dangers of vaping. Our second strategy will be appearances on radio shows in order to make the dangers of vaping known and to promote anti-vaping ideologies. With the radio reaching nearly 60 million adults aged 35 to 49, not only is this an effective way to spread awareness, but it can also allow for interactions between parents who have questions and concerns and experts who can offer them answers or guidance. Parents can listen to this at any time in the car, easily starting normally taboo conversation with their parents about vaping in a closed environment. The most powerful strategy we have focuses on motivating parents to take real action and will take the form of e-cig drop boxes. We would have locations set up around the country where parents can give us their child's e-cigarette in exchange for a care package. In this care package, we will include a resource guide, which includes support groups and hotlines to contact when in need of additional support and mental health resources for children to cope with their addiction. Also, we will include gum, as studies show that chewing gum reduces cravings and helps with withdrawal when a nicotine-dependent person cannot smoke. The coolest part for kids we will provide a reusable Yeti water bottle that says, I saved myself, that kids can use as a reminder of their strength and the addiction that they are overcoming. Studies show that water allows residual nicotine to leave your system, which helps ease withdrawal side effects, making hydration a key factor in recovery. And for parents, this is a great way to get them actively involved. Stress Balls will offer a quick and portable method to ease anxiety over vaping, and a free 30-day gym membership at Planet Fitness will effectively reduce the severity of nicotine withdrawal symptoms and increase self-confidence. Here, I'll discuss the two companies that we'll be partnering with. 
Yeti, which has a history of community outreach and has a section of the website dedicated to supporting various causes, and Planet Fitness, which has a track record of supporting youth causes. They already offer free memberships to students and have partnered with the Boys and Girls Club. As a result of this campaign, we are aiming for three main key results. First, we will push the government to push harsher regulations on all e cigarette companies by setting a federal, a federal age limit to 21. Imposing a limit on the amount of nicotine that each vape pod has, as well as forcing all e cigarette companies to state all the chemicals that are inside of their products that are on the boxes, since regulators do not currently require that. Next, we will see a decrease in the percentage of young kids vaping, bringing the number of U.S. high schoolers vaping from 27% to 17%, the amount of middle schoolers vaping from 10.5% to just 3%. Additionally, executions do include access to the American Lung Association's digital tools, which will increase traffic and awareness to the ALA. Even with this campaign, in reality, Alvin said it best earlier, nobody cares if someone else's child dies from vaping. The e-cigarette companies don't, the government sure doesn't. What we are making sure is that parents finally do. Thank you all for your time. Wow, um, that was very powerful. I think you all uh, was the first group to I, I really see, um, look at the, um, uh, what's that, the advocacy portion of it. Interesting. So I'd love to hear Cheryl's feedback. This, this one wasn't mine. I'm, I'm happy to give feedback, but this somebody else I, I think might have prepared. Yeah, well, we switched you. We switched you and Julius. You didn't, did you get that? Did I just got that? the note that Julius was taking the other one, so no uh, problem. Okay, but if you... Any, sure, happy to to add comment thanks so much team um one of the things that i thought was incredible about what you did is there were just powerful language imagery in your presentation first of all you're all amazing um presenters um and and that's that is a an art and a science and you're compelling i think we were all leaned in every minute of your presentation so um you guys seized everyone's attention um from the beginning, I think you really laid um, a narrative around um, just how pervasive um, these companies are and all of our social institutions and how it's really hard even, um, you know, for parents to outshout them. Um, they're being sort of, this message is being sent to teens at all levels. So I thought you did a great job with the setup, setting the, the situation, if you will. Where I thought um, perhaps um, it could have been stronger, you set up such a strong footprint. I thought your tactical multi-channel plan, all of the different areas that you plan to execute was great. I didn't really see necessarily the creative thread revealed and then thread it through. Um, I'm not sure if when you said you showed the sort of I saved myself on the Yeti bottle at the end, if I saved myself is the call to action or the rallying cry or sort of the bow for this. I wasn't sure. So I thought that was maybe a missed opportunity. Um, your voiceover was excellent in terms of explaining the partners you chose and why. Um, and I really liked the kind of unapologetic activist tone you all took. It was it was urgent. I felt the urgency. Um, and why you chose this um, approach and it felt